Ne Welcome back to the LEU Leadership Race Question Time, hosted by LSTV. Now we're on to our final category, and that is the Communications and Internal Affairs candidates. So firstly, can I invite up... There we go. Louis Gill, please. Sorry about that. Good afternoon, Leeds University Union. I was the candidate that was um, described by the Leeds student paper as the dark horse for a controversial policy about uh, abolishing compulsory attendance to, the, uh, to, to lectures. Um, I, it, it, uh, my, my general vision for the union is a much more, and the university as well, is a much more democratic, kind of student orientated. Union. In fact, the students are involved. Uh, I have greater involvement in how the how the union is run. I believe that the that student participation should be greater, and they should have a better decision on how union money is spent. Understand the greater roles of how of how the executive work, and um, and which I am, which I am planning on implementing and by provide, but at the discretion of. Um, lead students with providing a union report in the, in the student paper. I, uh, in that, uh, which in that will get, provide a greater exposure to the, um, to, to the student body. I, I will. Uh, Louis, I'm going to have to interject. It's all right, thank you very much. It's all right. Next up, can I invite Michelle Malarkey for hers? I'm a bit smaller than Louis, is that okay? What's up, uni? <laughs> I'm Michelle Malarkey, I'm president of the Irish Dancing Society, and I'm a third year English undergraduate. More importantly, I think I'm just like you guys. I don't claim to know everything there is to know about how to run the union, but I'm a quick study, and more importantly, I am passionate about leading and representing students. Within the first week of Irish dancing classes this term, I learned all 72 members' names. Now, that's not a lot, not compared to the 33,000 students we have here but I'd like to think that I made those 72 people feel involved, appreciated, and valued. And that's how I want to make you feel. The union loyalty card scheme a lot of the candidates have proposed this year. It's going to be problematic, but I will work tirelessly to make a system that will benefit you, and that's all of you, regardless of society hierarchies. The same goes for union support and advertising. We fundraise this year with little to no publicity, so I know how it feels that you feel overlooked. A vote for Malarkey is a vote for equal support and treatment and an approachable, relatable exec. Thank you very much. Next up is Leanne Cahalane, please. I'm Leanne and I'm running for CIA because I believe that everyone can get the most out of Leeds University. As CIA, I will make sure every penny raised by LUU is well spent. I will be accountable, ensuring all union spending is published online, allowing you to have a say on your future investment. Next year, due to new tuition fees and rising prices, money is going to be tight. I will help you manage your money by running financial one-to-ones with other students. I will work with local employers to increase the amount of suitable local part-time work on JobLink. Your union should accommodate your specific needs. I will create a postgraduate lounge in, L- in, the, in LUU, have LUU publications in other languages, and look to extend a union opening hours over the vacation periods. I can be honest and open. I can make you feel included. I can help you when you're in need. I can make your union there for you, but only you have this choice. You can make the difference by voting Leanne Can. Next up, Anthony Hadley, please. Hello, everyone. I'm Anthony, and together, with the help of students, I want to make this union the best we've ever had. 
Some of my greatest memories of Leeds have been thanks to Leeds University Union. And I also work here. Over two years, I worked in three different departments, volunteering, help desk, and marketing. So I feel like I've got the experience to get the change we need. We need to do a lot better at breaking down the barriers that stop co people coming through those doors. And I want to be a lot better at being there for every student. I want to bring the cost of a pint down to two pounds and hopefully reduce other drinks prices. I want to make it easier to get tickets for our events with a self-service ticket machine and hopefully half queues as a result. I want to start saying thank you to students who come and support us with a union loyalty card that's there for everyone. And also societies need a lot more help from us. I work to the help desks so I know the challenges you face. We need a new booking system and I also want to reopen the peanut gallery. And finally, I want to make it possible for you to create change in your union using Facebook too. And I want to fight for your needs on a national level again. Thanks very much. Thank you. Next up, Mark Stewart, please. Thank you. Hello, friends. I'm Mark Stewart, and I'm the current Communications and Internal Affairs Officer and I'm re-standing for the role this year in this year's leadership race. Now, why am I actually standing again? Well, look at what I've done this year. I've kept the two-pound meal deal, despite strong calls to get rid of it. Yes, thank you for the cheer there, Jonathan. Um, I've also made sure that students had the biggest input in the redesign of the Roger Stevens building, the Worsley building, and major teaching spaces around campus. That means the Roger Stevens building is actually going to be numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 now, rather than the current numbering system. And I also got the uh, university to publicly declare no confidence in the policies of the government, not just its fees policies, but its numbers controls as well. Next year, I want to introduce a union reward card that rewards you for what you buy, yes, but also for how involved you get, because it's you guys that actually make this union the best in the country. I also want to make sure that there are cheaper deals in all our union shops, as I think it's right that every student should uh, be able to afford to shop here. And I want to renovate spaces like the Riley Smith Hall down there and the Raven Lecture Theatre too. So please, if you like this, there's more on the website, but please re-elect Mark Seward's number one for communications and internal affairs. Thank you. Thank you very much to our candidates for their speech. I'm now going to open to the questions. First question, I'm going to direct at Anthony. Should the BMP be invited by the union to debate their policies on campus? Um, no, I don't believe that they should. I feel that like students uh, may be threatened by their presence on campus. Uh, I also um, believe that it's not for the union to tell people what to believe, but it's important for the union to make sure everyone feels safe in Leeds. And I think that by inviting them onto campus will be causing a lot of trouble for ourselves as well. Thank you very much. Next, Louis. I, I think that we should have the BNP on, uh, on campus on the grounds that if, even though we find their views abhorrent, I think that it's important to, to have them out, out in the open because the more and more they, become mar they, they seem to feel to be, become marginalised and not part of mainstream society, they will, they, the, the more angry they will get and it will explode. I mean, I recently read an article about kind of a, a conference, about a, a far-right conference, and if we don't know, it, we need to expose how vile these people are, and I think as a student body, we can do that very effectively. Thank you, Michelle. Um, I'm inclined to agree with Louis, partially. I think um, invite is quite a strong word, but I think we should be allowed to give the MP a chance, the BNP a chance to argue their points so that students are allowed to argue their points against them. Because until we demystify parties like this, the students aren't going to be able to express their views and um, adequately argue against them. But I don't think that we should allow our students to be exposed to hate speech, so that would be, need to be policed quite, quite a lot. Mark? Uh, no is the short answer. I don't think the BMP should be invited onto campus to speak purely because as a students union we're supposed to be here to represent all students and there are lots of students that feel physically endangered when the BMP and other groups like them come onto campus. Fair enough they can go wherever they like in other public forums that we don't control but while students here have got um, the union to, uh, union to help them out then we will step in and say no to the, uh, the BMP. Uh, and I also think that we should resubmit our no platform policy, which is saying that we will not accept the BMP in here when it falls this March. Liam? This question is for 
quite a controversial is issue, but um, I feel that they do have the right to come and express their opinions because everyone should feel included in part of the university. And we're also, I believe that we should be a politically neutral body. So if anyone wants to come and express their political opinions, why should the exec have the decision to say yes or no on that? Thank you. Um, this second question, I'm going to direct to start with Michelle. Should the union give money to any student to run a campaign? Um, to clarify, is that like an, uh, an exec campaign or just any campaign? It says, we'll go any campaign, a campaign. Have I been, oh, I thought I'd been turned off because of that question. Um, I think it's obvious that we need to make sure that students aren't campaigning for things that the majority of the student body are going to find offensive. But at the same time, the union is here to represent all students. And I think that for one person to decide whether a student's campaign is legitimate enough to be given money for, I think that gets into very dangerous ground. So I think we should probably try and allow all students to campaign, but obviously we should try and keep an eye on campaigns that might prove offensive to the majority of students. Liam? Yeah, I very much agree with you, Michelle. I feel that um, dependent on the campaign, uh, we shouldn't be supporting people if it's something offensive or it's just nothing to do with, say, the union or the university body as a whole. Uh, we're here for an education, and that's the priority. Campaigning can come into that, but occasionally it cannot. Mark? Um, campaigns with a democratic mandate, so let's say they were put to the better forums, then, yeah, of course we should support those and help the students get those off the ground. And I also think we should help societies that want to run campaigns as well. In terms of any student just rocking up and saying, I don't know, I want to campaign for... Uh, having an elephant in the lobby every week of the year. Uh, that might be a bit more difficult, so we, we'd suggest that they go to the forums to try and get a mandate to do that. Louis? I think you need to judge each case on its, case on its merits, but, and I'd, I'd agree with Mark in that you'd have to, kind of, I think you'd have to put it towards a kind of democratic forum once it's been suggested. Because, I mean, I think that there might be a student who believes there is a certain cause that isn't being expressed, and it may be a just cause, and I think, again, that should be brought down to the student body to agree or not, not agree, but I think it's down to the communications officer to... Um, to, 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 uh, to, to express, express that concern of that student and then present it to the student body. Anthony? Uh, I, th I also agree it needs to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, it's something that I'd actually like to get um, the representatives uh, of Leeds University involved in, school rep, course reps, uh, and the activity exec, for example. Uh, I'd really like them who have kind of invested their time in helping the union to be represented and to represent students. They should be involved in that decision-making process as well. I think a blanket rule uh, on supporting all or supporting none is wrong. I think that we definitely need to look at it by a case by case basis. Thank you very much. This is a question that's just come through on Twitter. Um, and I'm going to go to Leanne first. Where, what is your stance if a student puts forward an idea for referendum which, though morally sound, would have a detrimental effect on the union and the societies? For example, um, last year we had the Coke ban that would have financially impeded the union. So if I go to Leanne first. Okay, on this one, we're here as part of a union and we're a dem democratic uh, place. So, therefore, it is up to you as students to decide on this one. If, it's been, if the issue has been raised by a student, there's clearly a concern that's, that's happening behind closed doors. I feel that it should still go through dem democratic vote and that we should, have the, we should give you students the right to still say yes or no. However, if it's something, again, offensive or perhaps uh, de severely detrimental or illegal, then the exec would probably take the position of saying no on this case. Louis? Well, the Coke ban's an interesting example because I, th I, I personally opposed it. I think that, um, that people, pe people should have, to have a choice in, which, in what they want to buy. Um, the, uh, and also, I mean, the fact is that I, I, with, with a kind of, if it could, could I hear the question again? Just to go back, because I've got um, it's, should the, no, sorry, Twitter feed's gone in. Um, would, where do you stand if a student puts forward an idea for referendum which, though morally sound, would have a detrimental effect on the union and therefore societies? I, I would probably 
oppose it. I would say that um, that that on that stand on those grounds, I think that the that the majority kind of rule in that case, rather than kind of this person having their say. Mark. Yeah, if it's um, going to referenda, then everybody should be able to vote on whether or not they agree with it. Otherwise, we won't be uh, a students' union meant to be deciding on policy for ourselves. Uh, however, if it was something really quite detrimental, say, on the union's finances, as the Coke ban would have been, would have cost us £300,000 at least, uh, then there's nothing wrong with the exec taking a stance and campaigning against that referenda. And also any student, uh, student school reps or any societies that wanted to get involved, there's nothing wrong with the exec helping them in their yes or no campaigns too. Michelle? Um, I think most of what I was going to say has already been said, so um, I'll repeat briefly that I do think that um, anyone should be allowed to put something to referendum, and if it goes to the student body to vote on that, then hopefully the majority of the student body will vote, and then it won't pass and won't be detrimental to the union, like the Coke ban didn't pass because of its financial detrimental effect. Anthony? Yeah, yeah I completely agree with that. I mean, we just can't be in a position to lose £300,000. The societies wouldn't get enough funding, we wouldn't be able to buy enough stock and essentials, it would just be a complete disaster and I think that what is important that we need to, I, what I would like to instill is a sense that we should, we've got some of the most intelligent people in the country at this university and we should encourage them to make up their own mind about what products they buy. The union definitely has certain responsibilities and that is really important and it's really important to me that students have a say on how the union is run. But equally, it's also important to look at the turnout, our referendum as well. Although it's our democratic system, it's actually not indicative of the entire student body as well. So, whereas personally, I would like to see the Sun newspaper banned from uh, campus for personal reasons. I'm not going to do it. Don't worry. Uh, I, when it came to um, the Better Union Forum, I was against the idea because people should be able to decide what they want to read. And, and that, that's the fact of the matter. This question is going to come to Mark first on. Should students be free to disrupt other students' events on political grounds? No. Um, as essentially, societies everywhere have, are allowed to run their own events throughout the university, throughout the union, and they register those events weeks in advance, particularly controversial speakers, which you need a, co a good couple of weeks' notice, otherwise you can't, you can't go ahead with it. And so, so other societies can be free to, say, protest outside the event, but in terms of actually disrupting the event or even stopping it, no, I don't think that's the case, and I don't think it should be the case here. Anthony? Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, I think, I think it's a no-brainer. I think if you started letting that happen, no society event, especially um, the cultural societies and the faith societies would have a really, really hard time uh, at just trying to get things done. You know, life is that not everyone is going to agree with each other, but it's our responsibility to make sure that these disagreements are facilitated in the right way and people do have an opportunity to have this say, but not to the detriment of others' activities. Louis? I, I agree with the others. I believe that if you stop people, disrupt people from in political activities, you are disrupting the dialogue. And I think you should be able to listen, listen to what people have got to say. Um, I think that... Um, uh, that, 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 I mean, obviously, having controversial speakers again is is good, and I think again, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't think that somebody else's political views should be in, um, imposed upon somebody else. I, I personally object to um, some of the kind of far left groups put, put, uh, writing things like Tory scum. I'm not a supporter of the Conservative Party, but I object to that. There are some people who are obje who are being threatened. There are, there are members of this union who are do support that party. And they are bit, bit feeling kind of threatened and, and, and are be, be, feeling threatened. Leanne? No, uh, disruption is completely wrong. You shouldn't wreck someone else's society event. It's, you know, being part of swing dance society takes months and months to plan any event, whether it's political or just any, any event. And at the end of the day, everyone should feel included. So you should... So everyone should feel included. So why does anyone else have the right to go along and have an opinion on someone else's say? Michelle? I also agree that I don't think that society events should be disrupted. But I, I think we do need to do is think of other ways of effective protesting because students should be allowed to protest about things that they think are important. So we need to try, try and encourage students to do this, but possibly in a more productive and less disruptive manner. At this point, I'd like to open up to questions on the floor. Does anyone have any questions? 
Can we get a microphone to this gentleman, please? Do you think the union should have a stance on issues which don't directly affect its members but are national or international? Um, I'll go to Louis on this first. Yeah, certainly. I think that I mean I think that students deserve uh, to have um, I think greater independence, and I think that the student the student should be able to organise and raise awareness about national events. I mean, la last year we saw things about the Japan earthquake, which the union endorsed. Um, I think that um, that I mean I, I, th I think that it's important that the student body are seen as engaged in national and international affair affairs. Liam. I think this is a really important one. I think it depends on the situation. I certainly think local issues that maybe don't necessarily affect the union directly. However, something like uh, Lee's Kergate Market, I don't know, it was two years ago that it was about to be shut down, um, the big John Lewis takeover. But um, essentially, that, that sort of opinion, we should definitely have a stance on that because it's really important for us as a community to back where we, where we belong. And furthermore, that goes on a national stance as well. I agree with the, when the uh, Japanese earthquake happened, we definitely needed to help support what was going on on a global issue. However, in some certain circumstances, global issues can sometimes aren't necessarily need to be backed by the union. Mark? Um, so again, on national and international issues, because it's a students' union, if students choose to support a particular issue, then fine, that's their business. Um, however, I know there'll be people who can argue when that issue's been voted on why they shouldn't take a stance, for example. However, if we were barred from taking any stance on any international or national issue, well, you look at e the 1980s, student unions then uh, were opposed to the South African apartheid. There was no direct benefit to students in opposing it, but it's now recognised that that opposition and their campaigning actually played a pivotal role in bringing down the apartheid. So it is worth doing, but again, only if the members consent to it. Michelle? I also agree. Um, if the students want the union to have a stance on national and international affairs, then it should. Obviously, the union itself cannot fight every battle internationally or nationally. And there are going to be some stances that the union takes that possibly not all of the students agree with, but a majority of the students agree with. And we have to be prepared to accept this. But generally, I think if the students are opposed to something nationally or internationally, or even in support of, then their union should try their best to represent them in this. Anthony? Uh, I think some of these issues can be an absolute minefield and I think if you look, I just want to use the Israel-Palestine issue for example, if the union, whether it, it passed or it didn't pass, the amount of people the union could potentially alienate is, I think is going to be an extraordinary amount and I think it definitely needs to be looked at by a case-by-case -case basis. It's important that students retain the power but it's important the union stays responsible and represents everybody as well. Question just coming on Twitter. What are your views and your stance on the NUS national walkout? Um, we're going to start with Anthony on this one. Uh, I'm, I'm for any peaceful and lawful demonstration against um, uh, the higher education reforms. Um, it, I, th I think in this case, it's for the students to decide. It was obviously going to referendum. Um, I personally am for it, but if it passes that students are against it, then I will wholeheartedly support that because it's my job to represent students at the university. Um, and, and yeah, that's all I have to say about that, really. Liam? Yeah, I'm pretty much the same. Essentially, uh, it's gone to referendum. If it, it's voted in, then we will, have, uh, we will support the strike. However, if not, then I'm politically neutral about this one. I mean... It, their new strike is something that will affect us. However, it's up to you students to make the decision on that matter. Michelle? I feel like I'm repeating everything. I also agree that if the students think that we should support the NUS walkout, then we should. But I also think that the students should be made more aware of our relationship with NUS and the union's relationship with NUS as a whole, because I imagine that a lot of students aren't completely aware of what's going on. And so I think that this is also really important before we make decisions like that. Louis? Personally, I disagree with the strikes. I believe that there, there are much more constructive ways in dealing with, um, 
with, 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 with the reforms. I mean, we've, we've striking, I mean, we've striked time and time again, and there's the, the proposals are still going through. Obviously, it's, it's, it's important that we um, express, if, if people are concerned about the reforms, then they need, to, they need to be articulated. But I think there needs to be a much more cooperative um, kind of attitude towards these, these things. And, not, and that doesn't mean kind of, kind of bending down backwards and accepting them. It means having to, uh, dealing with what's, what is the situation at the time and being able to provide, as, as a union, rep, as, if I was elected as a union representative, uh, provide students with the best possible services under the conditions that we've got. Paying for the blood of David Cameron or Nick Clegg isn't going to help at all. So I am going to support the walkout. I'm voting yes in that because it ensures that we keep the issue of higher education and the government's changes to it, whether they're the 9K fees or whether it's the HE white paper. Uh, it's made sure we make sure we keep that on the cards and that the Conservatives and Lib Dem government doesn't actually forget that we know because that's why they pass tuition fees so early. They hope we forget by the time the next general election comes around in 2015. And just quickly on the point of NUS, uh, you're right, National Union of Students should have really made this clear. It's been so last minute organised, that's why the referendum is happening this week. So what we can do is we can take it back because... Let's be honest, at Leeds, we're one of the best student unions, and when Leeds decides to do something, that's emulated by others. So if NES can do this action in future, but make sure that it's done in a way that suits Leeds, we can help the national movement too. Next question, we're going to come to Michelle first on. Um, to what extent do you think that your own party politics will play on your appointment to the role? Right, I'm going to admit that after the recent election, I am politically confused um, as I was let down by my party quite a bit in the last election, so I don't at the moment know exactly where I stand, which I feel might be mirrored by quite a few of you, I don't know. But what I do think is that my personal views and the personal political views of the exec should not affect their role on the exec, because there's no way that we can represent such a diverse body of students if we're letting our own political views affect our job. It's natural that we're going to have them, but I think we should try our very best to not let, let this affect how we represent our students. Anthony? Completely agree. Um, I've got nothing else to add. That was a fantastic response. Mark? Um, obviously, the union and the executive officers should always be party, political, party politically neutral because there's laws in place to prevent that, and it's right in principle too. Um, but the, the, to be honest, we can say that our politics won't affect our decisions, and that's fair. You know, We can always conscience, consciously say, yeah, I'm not going to let my politics affect this. However, every single person here, whether in the audience or on the panel, whether they've got a party membership or not, and I'm a proud member of the Labour Party, um, has values and has principles. And those values and principles will affect every decision you make, whether or not you're consciously trying to avoid it or not. And so I do think that values and principles will always play a part in exec office decisions. Yes, you've got to make sure you stay party political neutral to make sure that you do the job as best you can. But to say you don't have values, well, I don't really, I don't really see that uh, being the case with anyone. Louis? Well, I'm going to be controversial here and say that I am a paid member of the Liberal Democrat Party. And I believe that, but I, I think that, again, you need to, I, I'm here to, rep, I, I want to be elected to represent students and not the party, and that is important. And so political neutrality is, is, is essential into, in, in, run, in the running of the union. Because, you, again, you do not want to alienate certain people from certain groups. And... And it, obviously, if you let if you, if you let your polit politics get in the way of that, then you, you, you that 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 that's kind of that will interfere with the entire function of the union. Liam. Yeah, definitely the exec are politically neutral, as I said earlier, and I would be a politically neutral at CIA at the end of the day. I definitely think that it's a strong thing between a differentiation between your work and your home life. And I think you can have these opinions in your home life, um, but when you come to work or play, whatever, or societies, then you have to think about what you're representing and who you are to people that you, you're, you're being a part of. And I think it's really important to differentiate that between that and in this situation, you'd have to be politically neutral, even if you have differences when you go home. Thank you very much. Any questions from the floor at this point? Yes, can we move on to yes, something? Uh, I, I don't think anyone um, would claim to not have um, values 
I think that I wouldn't have faith in an executive officer if they didn't have any values. But why, when we have 32,000 students, those values would be, like, why would I, I didn't see a problem, I have to compromise my political values to suit the needs of students. I mean, what, if I was a conservative and I was for the rise in tuition fees, um, why would I come out and say, okay, well, uh, actually, I'm going to hold back a bit on campaigning against that because my values don't agree with what the student body say? Thank you. Um, so essentially, when you've got policy on things like tuition fees, you have to take the stance that students have given you. You have to. And what's more, students, because they've elected you, they've elected you to make decisions in the union. As the leader, there are a thousand decisions which you must take, which you can't put to referenda and which there isn't policy on. And there's no way you can avoid making those decisions without having values point to start the comments. I'm off, sorry, but this is not a question from the debate and this is on separate matters. Is there any questions from the floor at this point? Can we get a microphone over to the Harriet at the back, please? Hello. Um, I want to ask a little bit about the relationship between the exec and the paper, um, because as you probably everyone's seen, it can be a little bit tense at times. Um, how will you, as CIA, make sure that the relationship remains good with the paper um, as it is at the moment. I'm going to move to Michelle for this point. <laughs> um, I think that's a really good question, but I also think it's really difficult. Um, I don't think the exec should be able to, to affect what goes in the paper. Obviously, that goes without saying that the paper needs to be completely neutral from the exec and independent from that. I think it would be quite nice to have an update of what the exec are getting up to in the paper, but that shouldn't be um, put in by us. I think that should be the student the lead student's decision to do that. I think in terms of relationship with the lead student, I'd like to think that I get on with most people. So I hope that I personally wouldn't be able to offend them. But I do think that it's going to be difficult if the lead student don't agree with some things the exec agree on and vice versa. But we just need to be, try and be professional about this. This is going to be our job. And in your job, you are going to come across people that you don't get on with. And you just need to put that aside and do what is best for the students and the best for the people that you work for. Louis? I think this is um, like a response to one of my policies in that I, I want to put in an executive uh, report in the lead student paper. I think that is absolutely essential that um, greater exposure of ac executive activities is broadcast to students and I think the best way of doing it is by putting, it, is, is by putting a report in the lead's paper. I'm not saying that I do not want to interfere with the workings of the paper and I said that in my speech that I will do it at the discretion of whoever is elected editor. Um, However, and it, I want to emphasise that this is not, I'm not, I do not want to turn the lead student into some sort of propaganda mouthpiece for the executive. It is just so that students have a, are more aware of, student, of, a, of the executive activity um, because at the, at the moment we have, we have the blog system on the union website but I, I don't think that gets stretched as far as, to many people as it should do. Mark? Um, yes, uh, the relationship between the exec and lead student must be maintained. Um, we are setting up regular meetings even now to make sure that we can make to make sure that anything that comes up that's controversial we can iron out uh, in advance if possible. But it is crucial that lead student remains autonomous. Uh, it's got to be able to criticise the exec, for example, when we get things wrong. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed that lead students taking a liking to my good friend Ant here, and I'm not going to complain about that. No, no, I'm not going to complain about that. That's fine. They're absolutely within their right to do that. Um, and, they should, and they should always be that. However, when stuff that gets this controversial starts to get printed, you know, the exec have to be there to make sure they're feeding back to lead student some of the problems that they've had. But that doesn't mean stepping in and saying you can't print that. Yep, yeah, I agree. Um, lead student is an independent body, which is reflecting the views of the students. And therefore, it's crucial just to remain uh, liaisons, may remain c calm and cohesive throughout the executive and lead student editor and the workers at lead student. Um, obviously, there will always be some controversy, but with meetings and with, uh, with regular communications, this can be dealt with. Anthony? Uh, thank, thanks for the shout out, Mark. Um, that meant a lot. Uh, I think lead student called me darling of the union in inverted commas. So I, I don't really know what to take from that. So take of it what you will. I'm really involved in union life. I love it. Um, darling, in inverted commas, maybe means that 
I, I might love it a bit too much, who knows? I really don't know what to take from it. Um, I think that understanding the student paper is essential to uh, any good relationship with it. I th think it would be awesome to have the opportunity to kind of like mill around on a Thursday um, if it didn't want to get, like hopefully not get in the way and see how they put the paper together, understand how they uh, form their stories, where they get their leads from. Uh, I think any understanding of, of the uh, other party in a relationship is essential to that. Um, it's very essential the lead student holder, the exec, to account, absolutely. Uh, I think they do a fantastic job of that. And I think it's also to, uh, important to remember that Lee student has over 50 um, years of award-winning success. It's a vital part of the union. It has 15,000 copies a week. And so, you know, it, it's fundamentally important to the exec, and it's fundamentally important to me, if elected, that we would maintain that strong relationship and we do anything we can to support them as well. Can we get a microphone down here for the floor? Hello, what are the current failings of the union? Um, I'd like this open to Louis first, please. Well, I think that's one of the things that has um, really got to me is often how when uh, things that shops like Essentials are not properly staffed um, during the busiest times, which I think is very is bad for students who may be in a rush. It's also bad for the staff, and it's clear that there are jobs that need to be that that, that can be that people can be employed to, to fill these roles. I mean, it's, it's it's very rare that I see all the tills being serviced at in the um, in, in, in essentials. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of small thing, but I mean, in terms of the functioning of the union and the kind of day to day on a day-to-day -day basis, I think, it's, I think it, it is quite important. Um, the, otherwise, um, I, I think that the, uh, that, that not, again, not allowing people not to have, kind of, have a choice in kind of buying bottled water is a, kind of, is a failing. I mean, it, it, which is, again, is a kind of creates people, uh, kind of creates revenue for the union and more money. Obviously, there was a referendum on that, and I, we, we, we're kind of bound by it. But um, I think there should be something more than the, uh, than the drinks fountains and it kind of ensuring uh, that everyone having to be insured to kind of carry around a plan an empty bottle with them all the time if they want a, a glass of water, a, a bottle of water. Mark? Yes, uh, the union does a lot of things well, but some of the things we could do better are voter turnout in student exec elections. 8,000 is the UK record so far. We're hoping to smash that this year with 10,000. Um, but we also, uh, we also need to get a referenda turnout up as well. 3,000 is a good number, but it's got to be so much more when it's deciding policy for the entire students' union. Um, we've also got to make sure that we do more for postgraduates um, uh, and also student parents and part-time students as well, because at the moment, all our Rate Your Union survey results say that we're not engaging those students properly. They don't see the value of us as much as, say, undergraduates do as well. So that's where we could improve. Michelle. Hello. Um, from talking to students in the past, for the past four weeks, um, a few main things have come up. Pricing. Um, a lot of you were torn on this, whether the union was too expensive or it was just right. But I think one of the things we could do is expand on Mark's meal deal and introduce more things and more varieties. And I can see Grace smiling because I know that one of the things is dietary requirements. So gluten-free foods has gone through the union. And I think, as Grace will point out, um, dairy problems and all the dietary requirements that a lot of you may have should be introduced in the meal deal to make things affordable for you. I think society involvement, I think that includes postgraduates. We had master students coming to Irish dancing that couldn't participate because they had so much work. So we need to make sure that societies are more available to a more diverse number of students to make sure that everyone is getting involved in their union. Anthony? I think the union needs to do a much better job of being there for students who might not come in every day and they might not be engaged with the society and, and spend you know, a lot of time in the building. Um, I think that there's, the way we can do that is, is obviously through a loyalty card system. So if they choose to come in once a week or they choose to go to Fruity and get their lunch a couple of times, you know, they're still getting rewarded, they're still getting thanked for that. Um, I think there is a big lack of communication around the democratic system. I think that once an idea passes, it just goes under the radar. Like, what, what's happened to the nap space? Where are we with it? When's it coming in? Uh, I, know that, I know there's information at the website, but you have to search for it, and it's not readily available for students. Um, and also, I think we need to do a lot better job, actually, uh, at lunch. 
I think it'd be really cool if we get another eating space, if it's in, in the extra space or somewhere else in the union to have a little bit more variety. I know maybe like a little bit of pizza, freshly made sandwiches or something like that, just to kind of spice things up a bit. And I think what's really, really important is we need to open up disabled spaces. At the moment, where the lifts are, it's erratic if they work or not. It's gloomy as well in certain areas, especially like around the back of the old bar and things like that. And I think we need to do a much better job of making this building more disabled friendly. And finally, Liam. This is a big issue for me, actually, because um, I'm a postgraduate this year, and during my undergraduate, I felt like the union was always there for me. And this year, I feel like it hasn't had the oppor- I haven't had the opportunity to be represented by the union. Uh, so one of my big things is to make a postgraduate a mature student lounge in LUU. Um, I feel that a lot of people, that a lot of my course mates and a lot of my friends don't feel like they have the opportunity to feel included by the union right now. We have a great union. I'm not trying to say that we don't. But I do feel like not everyone feels like they can be represented and included right now. And I think also it would be really beneficial to produce more documents in different languages. I feel like that could really make our internationals feel more included. And those who are taking um, modern languages courses as well. Thank you very much to our candidates. That concludes the question time for the LEU leadership race. Important dates. Voting opens Monday the 5th of March at 10am and voting closes Thursday the 8th of March at 4pm. The leadership race results can be watched live on Friday the 9th of March in the foyer at 5pm. All voting that takes place is electronic and can be through the LEU website or at the computer ballot stations. That's all from LSTV. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome back to Leeds University Union Leadership Race. Uh, and this was the last category of communications and internal affairs officers. This is the senior most position of the union executive and uh, they are handle democracy and governance of your society. So we have five candidates running for this position. Uh, there's a lot of competition this year. We have Leanne Gehlein, uh, Louis Gill, Anthony Hadley, Michelle Mullerkey, and Mark Seward, who's running for re-election for a CIA officer. There have been brilliant ideas thrown out. Uh, they, the first of the ideas is to publish the Leeds Student newspaper in different languages. We've also had uh, an, a motion to propose for a self-service ticket machine to be, made, to be built in the union where you can uh, buy your tickets for union events. And there's also been a call for focus on international issues. So that concludes the leadership race uh, for this year. Uh, once again, to remind you, voting opens from the 5th of March and closes on the 8th of March. You can access all manifestos online and use the vote match to choose your candidate for, to represent you in this union on leedsuniversityunion.org slash leadership race. Special thanks goes to Steve Dowson, coordinator of union elections, Rachel Mayers, hosting uh, the question time, and the entire Leeds student crew, TV crew for their efforts in organizing this event. Once again, this is Abdul Karim reporting live as analysis for, for the leadership race. Bye for now.